Quick Snap. This Quick Snap is one of five Quick Snaps that will be covering the fundamentals of playing inside linebacker. It is a shorter part of an hour and a half long video I put together about how we've gone about coaching up the fundamentals of our inside linebackers the past few years. So I'll make sure I put a link in the description down below to that longer video if you want to check it out. And by the end of the week, I plan on getting links to all five quick snaps about the fundamentals of inside linebacker play. In this quick snap, we're going to talk about pass keys and reads for inside linebackers within a 3-4-2 high defensive structure. How they're ultimately relating to the number three receiver, controlling the final number three receiver and using the number three receiver to tell them their pass responsibility, how they need to leverage crossers or dig routes, and again, match up with the final number three receiver. And lastly, look at some actual uh, pattern matches by inside linebackers against two by two sets and three by one sets. At the high school level, I think inside linebackers are most effective when you are using them to provide pressure. We play a lot of cover zero, and, and we're going to have the linebackers get uh, to the quarterback, um, pressure the quarterback, and maybe match a uh, running back out of the backfield, depending on what we do with our outside linebackers. But there's times and places when you're playing your zone coverage. Um, ultimately, our, our matchup, cover four, cover two, two read type deal. Um, where those inside linebackers, their ability to pass, drop, and relate to receivers is what makes a coverage airtight. And it, it lets you give different looks by their ability to pass, drop, and, and play off of what the number three receiver does. So again, their pass, drop, we talked a little bit about this when going over the fundamentals. Their pass drops approximately a 45, working to play inside and under the route of the final number three receiver. And, and, and Final number three receiver means if three goes out, I'm looking for something coming in replacing him. If three comes at me, that's what I'm hooking up on. That's what I'm playing inside and underneath. Uh, after taking that first step downhill, that's probably the biggest pain in the butt about seven on sevens is those inside linebackers get used to, all right, I just drop, I just drop, I just drop. I still want that first step downhill, checking what my guard does if I'm reading guard, checking what the backfield does if I'm reading backfield. Um, and then that linebacker should immediately drop once he sees his pass from whatever his key is, once he reads past, he wants to drop his outside foot backwards at a 45, open up his hips, uh, and, and get dropping, snapping his eyes to that number three receiver wherever he is. If he's out of the backfield two by two, or if he's uh, either a tight end or a slot receiver and, and three by one stuff, and sprint for death. We're, we're aiming for 10 to 12 yards because in a game it turns into eight to 10 yards. We're keeping our head on a swivel, uh, and again, relating to what that number three receiver does. You know, if, if that three receiver goes out, it might be a slant or dig um, coming from outside receivers. It might be a crossing route. Could be a QB scramble. Uh, if you got a scrambling QB, that, that's something inside linebackers have to be able to account for. So here is an example of, of being able to help with the, the containing the quarterback. So the way we play it a lot of times, it's two by two. There's a the number of three receiver. If we're run, rushing only five, and this is the last play of the half, uh, if we're rushing only three, excuse me, we're playing five zero five. That's why I said that. Uh, right now, end of the half, he's relating to number three, the linebacker on the bottom of the screen, or Will. Mac linebacker spying the quarterback because he's a scrambling quarterback. That, that, that's the deal we got going on. And this is a good example of spying. Something we don't coach up all that much, but his job, don't let that guy scramble. He forces him. We get, I think, our one and only sack of the game. Other linebackers working on the number three receiver. All right, what's the number three receiver do? It's the running back. Oh, he's helping block. So now I can help with crossers. And it'd be nice if he got a better reroute here on, on this uh, inside route. That route's so flat, I might as well stay on top of it. Plus, the, the play's taking longer. They got the check down here, and he, he knows it. He gets back up and scrambles. He lost his foot. And, but the quarterback didn't want to throw there. Uh, another Here's an example relating to number three receiver. Okay. Guard releases that screen. Three receivers outside. I'm working to the outside. Three receiver blocks. All right. Find the thing coming in. Our five technique almost makes a sweet play in the backfield. 
and our inside linebacker comes and cleans it up. So he's looking for the first thing coming in because three's been out. Plus his guard let him, his guard leads him there just as much as anything else. Guard releases, that's something we actually implemented in the inside run that week for this team because they run a lot of jailbreak screen, tunnel screen stuff, and we get out to the perimeter. One of the drills we do to uh, try, try and rep that, I should say inside linebacker, but whatever, we'll keep rolling through it, is our, our inside 2-3-2. Two, two. Uh, inside linebackers are playing 3-2. to two. Uh, They're rerouting the seam by 3, and, and they're using their eyes as they reroute that number 3 to find the final number 2. If that number 3 is coming out of the backfield here, um, if he works out, I'm working to number 2. I'm playing inside, making sure there's some air under the ball. So here we are, number three's in the backfield, number three blocks. I can drop, it'd be nice if our, our linebacker on the bottom of the screen could drop better. Uh, linebacker top of the screen does a great job here. Unfortunately, he tips it and it gets completed to the seam route. But we, we had been beaten by the, the dig or the slant, whatever you want to call that, by number one. Uh, we'd been beaten by that a couple more times earlier in this game. Right now, he, he understands, all right, I'm playing inside and underneath the two. Number three never came out in the route. I don't have to help with that. And, and he's going to be inside of that route. Unfortunately, tips it up, gets caught. So now, where's number three? One, two, three. There's the third receiver. It also happens to be wearing number three. He's in the seam. I'm in the seam. I'm underneath it, I undercut it, and, and I'm playing in underneath it and undercutting it because now if the quarterback wants to complete that, he's got to put more air on the ball. He puts more air on the ball. That gives our safety time to come up and get it. Good pass breakup. Other thing we work is uh, crossing routes there. So we've we, we got four cards when we do this drill. That's it. Working our 2-3-2 two, two matches um, out of 2-2. Out of two and this gets the linebackers really kind of good at everything they're doing. Again, inside linebackers play three to two. What's three do? do? Three goes away. So I snap my eyes here to that number two. Number two crosses. If I drop for enough depth and understand what offenses are trying to do. Yeah, all right, hit that four yard route. He's going to pass by me. I'll leverage inside. Uh, other linebacker leverages outside. Talking about the Mac linebacker primarily here. And, and, and we'll get that thing tackled for a four, five, six yard gain. Until we get down around the goal line, that's fine, you know. Um, but that guy goes across. Ultimately, I'd want the final number three ends up being that dig. Here's our JVs a few years ago. And they get some crossing route type deal here. Yep. Running backs out. Three's out. You see the eyes of the linebacker immediately goes outside. Where's Who's going to be the final number three? Uh, number seven coming across here. And this is a two-back set. So that running back block, and he's number two. He barely matters, and then he blocks. So he really doesn't matter in the pass coverage. Eyes outside. And really, it's uh, our backside linebacker does a better job of it. I don't get it. I don't, but they're JV guys. All right, that's your guy. You want to be... All right, he crosses in front of you. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Like, all right, crosses in front. We should have him keep in leverage to that, that side. 82, it'd be nice if he dropped off for a little more depth. And then we're going to drive on the route when it gets thrown. Because what are, what are teams trying to do when they got that crosser coming? They're trying to hit a dig. Here's the dig come from the other side. Now, the, the one thing, as much as... Number 11 gets lost here a little bit. He keeps dropping. His head's on a swivel. He's able to break on the ball as he gets thrown in the area of the final number three. And it doesn't get thrown while he gets a hand on the ball. Real good out of these two linebackers. So where's the number three receiver? It's two by two. He's, he's the running back in the backfield. He fakes the ball and he releases to the flats. Okay, uh, he's so that linebacker's relating there. 
three goes away for the other inside linebacker, who's the new final three? He's crossing right here. And because those linebackers take care of the underneath stuff, that lets our DBs sink and, and drive down on the routes, almost come up with the pick. I mean, ultimately, we want to get these things bracketed by our safeties and our corners. And you, and you see a good job here. We're playing our, our, our matchup coverage. The corner forces the inside release, so the safety that you can't see on the screen, he plays the post. Corner's playing outside. He's able to fall in. We got the route that they're trying to get to, the dig, coming from the other side. We got to bracket it. Uh, other thing will work is, is some half field stuff. So again, what's that number three do? Does he block? Does he release? If he releases and you're playing split safety coverages, like that inside linebacker's got to be ready. That's the classic seven on seven route of, of send the running back up the seam. All right. Uh, other thing three can do, he works to the perimeter immediately. Uh, three works to the perimeter in the drill. I'm going to yell push. I'm, I'm matching the new number three here. That number two comes in. That's going to be my job. Unless he, I'll reroute it. If he keeps on crossing, I'm yelling cross, cross, cross to my, my buddy at linebacker. If that number three fakes, that's, that's my job. We still got uh, three guys out on the perimeter, outside linebacker, corner safety, to take care of the number one and number two receivers. Here's a good example of stacking the three receiver, three receiver fakes. So that fake led his eyes to the next receiver, number 17, and 17's covered. We're inside underneath with the linebacker. We're outside on top. Uh, really, we should be inside on top, but we're on top with the safety. Corner coverage is pretty good, so should have got an intentional down, uh, grounding, in my opinion. Playing high school rules here. So uh, here's an example. Number three goes vertical. Not number three, excuse me. It starts out three by one, goes to two by two. So where's number three? It's the running back. Running back blocks. Both guys can stack and sink. Ref gets in the way of, of the inside linebacker on the top of the screen. So his drop's not deep enough. Inside linebacker on the bottom of the screen does a great job dropping, really. Heads on a swivel. He'd be able to make the tackle if it was completed. So now it's two by two. Number three is the running back. Here's a good example of we're showing we're walking up. We're showing like we're going to go. Both guys are showing like they're going to go. Only one does. Great job of, all right, there's no number three receiver. I'm, I'm helping with crossers. Here comes the slant. And he just barely misses the pick. This is a good example. If, if he sprinted his butt back to about 12 yards, he's driving down on it. Instead of, instead of fingertips on it, he gets all his hands on it. He's picking it. He's running for a while, having extra fun. End zone shot. Three is part of the protection. Stack and sink. Sink harder. And, and now that quarterback was going to run him down. But he, he's running for a while. He's having a lot of fun talking about how he touched the ball. Uh, number three receiver's in here at fullback now. Fullback goes away. Number three receiver's technically the running back. Okay, number three receiver, running back, runs a fake, becomes part of the pass pro. The other back in the backfield, the, the, the fullback, sniffer, whatever you want to call him, he's part of the protection. I, I'm a stack and sink player. Great job sprinting to the ball, making a tackle for a four-yard gain. First and ten, we can live with that. Uh, three by one matches, half field. If everything's in the seam, we're, we're going to... Be in the seam. We're going to play inside and underneath. Inside underneath. Three goes out. I'm getting my eyes out, finding the final number three in, in the seam alert look here. Uh, that's was the original number one becomes the final number three. That's what I'm matching. I'm playing the underneath stuff so that way outside linebacker safeties can play uh, on top and 
and, and keep leverage and maybe double bracket something like a corner route by number two. The seam cross there, three's in the seam. I'm starting to reroute that, but my eyes are to two. If two crosses the uh, original alignment of the number three, he's the new final number three, that's mine. Here we go. Number three, Mac linebacker drops off, plays underneath the seam, forces the ball to be thrown somewhere else. And here's the case of our outside linebacker. We drop off deeper. All right, three goes to the flats like that. That's not really my job when we're working our cloud coverage. If I keep sinking as well as the outside linebacker, that curl route that they run with the number one receiver. I, I play underneath it. They check it down. They get less of a gain. Real good on number threes in the seam. Inside linebacker actually plays it better than the outside linebacker. So they check it out to the outside linebacker. Unfortunately, they only need a one yard gain. Really not bad pass coverage at all. It's just third and one. They need one. They get one. And now this, this ball is going to get completed. I, this is one of those things. Uh, alignment that we talked about. All right, it's empty here. I want to work to a 50 technique. He's still buried inside as probably a 20 technique. And I, I want to work outside a little bit more, especially this team was not like a quarterback run team when they got empty. But threes in the seam. He plays them. All right, eight-yard gain. Early, early in the drive. No big deal. So now number three receiver, it uh, starts off, it's two by two. Now it becomes three by one. Number three receiver is the tight end. I drop. Now if he worked, instead of working, he's dropping on his 45, he should see the stem of that receiver and stop his drop, let the receiver come to him. And instead of working it in there and, and getting... A tackle again not not a terrible play just that ball maybe doesn't get thrown if he works on stacking him inside and then on top of that he doesn't play the routes pretty flat but if he's positioned inside and works to play underneath he, he's got to understand his safety's got his back and I mean that's who ultimately makes the play is the safety watch the end zone clip real fast He doesn't keep that inside leverage is probably the biggest problem here. Especially with what we got going on on the backside. He, he needs to understand what's what's his backside linebacker working. Um, oh, we're bringing the outside linebacker. So the backside linebacker needs to help on the, on the number two. Thanks for checking out this quick snap on Coaching Football with Brian Klee. Please follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Subscribe to the channel, Coaching Football with Brian Klee, by clicking down below. And if you have any further follow-up questions, email me at coachbrianklee at gmail.com.